and then you can also uh, see that uh, the amount or the quantity of the proteins uh, that should be less than uh, less than the fruits and vegetables but that should be much more than that of the fats and oils and sugars and we should eat and uh, the quantity of fats and oils or sugars should be minimum okay at least yes ma'am yeah, or least yes so uh, this is this pyramid tells us about the quantity of the foods that we should eat each day or every day okay okay ma'am okay anything else no ma'am okay now trisha yes trisha trisha you unmute your device can you hear me ma'am trisha left i think okay okay yes ma'am she left so now suhana parveen suhana you unmute your device yes ma'am I have doubt in balance diet, ma'am. There has written eaten in plenty, ma'am. What is mean of that? Plenty in plenty. That means enough food. What is required? So our body required uh, the quantity of the food that our body requires every day. The quant uh, the amount of water, at least eight to ten glass of waters, we should eat every day. So the quantity that we need that is called plenty. That means enough. That is enough for our body. We should uh, eat that uh, that much of that that kind of food or that much of water every day that we need. So plenty means enough. And, ma'am. Ma'am, they are telling oil and butter when we are eating. We are fat. Fats and oils. Yes, they of course contain the uh, fats. Fats and oils like butter, ghee, oils like mustard oils or uh, any oil that we use, sunflower oils or refined oils. Any any type of oils, butter, ghee that we use, they contain fat. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Oh. Okay, you're welcome. Now, Ipshita, Ipshita, you want me to device? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, can I show the diagram of the brain? You have drawn it. Okay, you have, you show show it. Yes. Ma'am, ma I can also show my food pyramid. Okay, Janan, you also show it. That is the diagram of the brain, right, Ipshita? You have drawn. Okay. Okay, very good. But at, at, at the end of the drawing, you should write figure F I G and then write the name of it. The I can also show the drawing of the brain. Okay, okay. You can also. I can also show. Those who have drawn it, you show. You can show it now. Can the food pyramid? Ma'am, I am showing. That is the food pyramid you have drawn, right? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I have a question. Very good, very good, very good. Ma'am, I have a question. Yes, yes, Trisha, I will come back to you. I will come back to you. Okay, Ipshita, do you have any more doubt? My brain. No, ma'am. You're drawing. Yes, part. Uh, What is that? Tell it again. What is this? What uh, What is this uh, drawing that you are holding? Every part of an ear. Every part of an ear. Ma'am, brain. Okay, very good. Very good, both of you. Hello, ma'am. Very good. Amitrajit, yes, you have also drawn the food pyramid. Very good. Very nice Look, point. Is color? No, I have also done. What is she? Yes. Ujan, have you drawn it? No, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so now, uh, yes, Trisha. Trisha, you tell me. Yes, ma'am, ma'am. Ma. You have told that my size, right? Physical activity. What we call physical activity. 
beside a balanced diet our body also needs regular exercise and rest to be healthy so some points are given here you can see exercise makes so why do we need exercise and rest so uh, the uh, because exercise makes our body exercise makes our bones and muscles strong exercise increases the flow of blood in our body exercise increases the supply of oxygen to our body and after exercise we sweat that helps to cool down our body and also get rid of some waste materials so some waste waste or toxic materials that are pretty, they also go out of our body uh, with the sweat okay and at the same time when we sweat our body also cools down the body temperature is also maintained by sweating if we are practicing exercise uh, we are performing that exercise and different kinds of activities and we also take uh, enough rest then uh, our body uh, becomes more healthy while exercising our muscles and our you all know the tendons and uh, uh, yeah yes all the muscles and tendons and bones they become strong and flexible there is a good flow of blood in our body and as the blood flow uh, increases that means if the blood flow increases that means the blood will carry more and more oxygen to all the parts of our body so if if more and more oxygen is reaching all the parts of our body and uh, then they will get the energy right because only if oxygen uh, reaches that part only then we are able to utilize the energy oxygen helps us to utilize the energy from the nutrients so all the parts will work properly exercise also increases the efficiency of our heart and improves the circulation of blood in our body rest is also necessary for well being of our health we should sleep at least 7 to 8 hours daily so if we are working or uh, if we are very active person if we uh, practice exercise uh, daily and uh, if uh, we work a lot then we need at least 7 to 8 hours sleep per day now we will read about some diseases an abdominal uh, sorry an abnormal condition that affects the functioning of our body that is called a disease so any abnormal condition that affects the functioning of our body that um, uh, that uh, makes us uh, suffer uh, that is not good for our health and that makes us suffer uh, that is called a disease diseases are of two types one is communicable disease and another is non communicable disease communicable diseases are those diseases that can spread from one person to another and non communicable diseases do not spread from one person to another so if i am having a disease today and uh, if the disease can spread from me to all the people around me um, then that will be called a communicable disease but if only i have the disease and i will not spread the disease to others so that disease will be called a non communicable disease the diseases are spread by tiny organisms called germs the communicable diseases are spread by tiny organisms called germs different types of germs are there like bacteria protozoa virus fungi okay so bacteria can cause diseases like typhoid so the bacteria that causes typhoid that is salmonella typhi that bacteria this is the name of the bacteria like you have your name we all have our names and surnames so just like that different bacteria also have their specific names to cause some particular type of disease like i'm just giving you one example the bacteria that causes typhoid um, its name is salmonella typhi so salmonella typhi will cause typhoid only it will not cause tuberculosis okay so tuberculosis is also um uh, is uh, is also uh, caused by some bacteria they are called mycobacteria or cholera that is also caused by some bacteria their name uh, is vibrio cholerae so vibrio cholerae will only cause cholera vibrio cholerae will never cause tuberculosis so there are some specific bacteria that cause some specific diseases plague is also there just like some protozoa are also there that can cause diseases like malaria and dysentery so these are different types of germs 
they cause different types of diseases. Viruses are also there that cause diseases like chicken pox, measles, mumps, and common cold. The common cold uh, and flu fever, viral fever, common cold, they are also caused by viruses. Last one is fungi that can cause diseases like ringworm disease, athlete's foot. So these are some diseases that, um, diseases of our feet. You can see here. Athletes and foot athletes, athletes foot means fungal infection in our toes. You can see I mean, here. Ringworm -like. Yes, just like a uh, ringworm, but uh, it's not circular, it's not round. Uh, so this is yes. why uh, they are not the, the infections that are caused by the ringworms. They are, yeah. they form a complete circle like this. Okay, yes, and they are also very infectious. Suppose any person who has this athlete, athlete's foot and you have, uh, you have just used his slippers, you will also get the infection. Okay, so these are communicable diseases. They are spread from one person to another. Here you can see this baby is having chicken pox and this person is also suffering from, this boy is also suffering from cholera. Okay, in cholera we can see diarrhea and uh, people can even die due to um, dehydration if they do not treat the cholera disease. Okay. Chicken pox. Yes, this is the chicken pox. Small pox. The pox uh, very students mute your device. See if any noise is coming from your device, then you should mute your device. Okay, now next in the next part, you can see non-communicable diseases. That means the diseases that do not spread from one person to another. Yes. Ma'am, what is cholera? Cholera is one kind of disease that is generally caused by some bacteria called Vibrio cholerae. And uh, in cholera, people generally suffer from, uh, uh, they, suf uh, they suffer from diarrhea and vomiting, fever, fever vomiting, diarrhea. And uh, as I have told you before also, they may even die due to dehydration if this disease remains untreated. If they don't go to doctor and treat it, then they can even die due to dehydration. Dehydration means loss of water. In diarrhea, what we can see, you will see that a lot of, lot of water goes out of our body, right? With our stool. So lots of water. So uh, due to that loss of water, due to dehydration, people may even die in cholera. So they, they uh, suffer a lot. Uh, they suffer from stomach pain. They have abdominal cramps, abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea. These are, the, uh, these are some symptoms of cholera. They may even uh, have fever, vomiting, headache. So they will suffer. And if they don't treat this disease, they can even die. So these are communicable diseases. These uh, cholera can also uh, spread from one person to another. If any person is having cholera from that person to any other person who is around uh, that person, they may have cholera disease. So we should always uh, keep safe distance from the patients who are suffering from these diseases, who are suffering from communicable diseases. But a little bit safer are the non-communicable diseases because they do not spread from one person to another. Non-communicable diseases are like heart diseases. If anyone is suffering from heart disease, lung disease, or kidney uh, failure of kidneys, or any kind of deficiency disease, that means any kind of uh, vitamin is... Uh, the person is lacking any kind of uh, vitamin, suppose like vitamin D. If any person is feeling pain in their bones, they cannot walk properly, right? Then uh, he went to the doctor and doctor checked him and told that you are suffering from deficiency of vitamin D. That means you will have to go out. You will have to go out in sunlight enough for at least 15 minutes every day and you will have to take vitamin D tablets so this, these diseases are non-communicable diseases. That means these diseases do not spread from one person to another. Okay, how do communicable diseases spread? Now look here. 
okay so today we will not read this part just mark up to this part okay non communicable diseases tomorrow we will start this part and let's see what is the next part that we have yes we will have to read about some diseases here some deficiency diseases we will have to read about some de deficiency de diseases and that is the last part so tomorrow we will complete this chapter okay so read this part today i will not give you any assignment for science only one chapter left okay so we will complete it definitely we will complete it on time now i am going to call your names students no one should leave the class you just check that you can mute and unmute your device yourself everyone yes ma'am we can yes ma'am